Hi everybody. Today's topic is how you can qualify under one of Canada's 100 plus immigration programs. And literally, there are more than 100 programs that one could look to if you want to immigrate to Canada. Canada's immigration policies are shared with the provinces. Under the Canadian Constitution, immigration is a shared jurisdiction, but that's only if the provinces have programs and policies, and in fact, all of them do now. Uh, historically, the federal government was solely responsible for bringing in almost all of newcomers to Canada. Last year, 2019, the latest figures, 341,000 immigrants were admitted to Canada, and about 30% of that were individuals who were chosen by what we call third parties. That means, for example, under the provincial programs, they have the right, provinces do, to select immigrants uh, according to the needs of the province. For example, Quebec was the first province to have its own immigration programs. And that came into a force in 1991. Shortly after that, Manitoba became the second province uh, when they launched their immigration provincial nominee program in 1995. Since then, there's been a range of new programs, what we call third parties that have a say in who gets to come to Canada. And the, the federal government is very happy to allow such a diverse range and array of third parties who can have a say in the immigration uh, program. So we have, of course, at the top of the list, we have the provinces. And we also have many pilot programs. They're usually small programs. For example, the Atlantic Pilot Program we have the Rural Immigration Program. Uh, these are all pilots. In other words, they were launched with a view to seeing how they fare, see how successful they are, uh, and some of them continue on, some of them don't. So we have a number of third-party programs. Even the Startup Visa Program under the business category is really a third-party program in that you have a third party that actually makes the selection decisions and decides who is a good business applicant to Canada. I'm referring, of course, to the designated entities that actually write the approval certificates, commitment certificates. So we have a whole range of third parties across the country. And of course, the reason we have this is because Canada is such a diverse country with so many uh, needs by each of the <clears throat> excuse me, some of the local labor markets. So what we're looking, what Canada's looking to achieve, and they've done it very, very successfully, is allow the various sub-markets and the various players across the country to have a say in the specific needs of those areas. And of course, all of these participants want to see that the people that they select are going to stay there and live there. That's been a problem over uh, the initial years, many years ago. Uh, people were using different programs to, to apply under, but they weren't staying there. So retention was a challenge for many of the provinces. Quebec, of course, was uh, uh, facing many challenges under its immigrant investor program, where people would access Canada through the Quebec program, but not necessarily stay there. But with a number of programs that have come aboard and are on stream now, people are staying and they are enjoying the qualities of life that present uh, from those areas. So immigration is now decentralized. We have what is called a decentralized immigration structure in Canada. It's very successful and it's become a model for, for some uh, other countries as well. And again, as I mentioned, it's, it's about the varying needs of the labor markets. For example, uh, truck drivers uh, on the lower side, uh, on the lower skilled, uh, have wonderful opportunities uh, in different programs. Uh, for example, Manitoba or British Columbia or some of the Atlantic provinces, they are specifically targeting long haul truck drivers. 
Um, you have tradespeople who uh, are sought after. You have medical professionals who are sought after um, uh, in different jurisdictions. Uh, so really, you must really look at the complexity that immigration really presents today. If you're an intending applicant to Canada, you first need to realize the choices are quite uh, wide and varied. The typical route to Canada is the Federal Express Entry System, but for many people uh, that might not work for a number of reasons. Either your score would not be high enough, in which case you need a hiring employer to help you through, to sponsor your application. So what you want to know is what is the best strategy that works for you. And to do that, you really have to be working with an eye on all the various programs that open and close at any given time. For example, we work with a number of physicians that are immigrating to Canada. Typically, an a physician could apply under the Federal Express Entry System and perhaps apply for an, uh, a work permit if they were to find employment in a particular clinic and apply for an LMIA. But that would not be the fastest route if you're perhaps going to say British Columbia uh, because British Columbia has an agreement under the international mobility uh, rules. Uh, British Columbia can allow a, a foreign doctor who comes from a certain country that we're working with, it has to be certain jurisdictions, um, that the physician would qualify for an exemption for a labor market opinion and get a very fast expedited work permit which then can be matched up with an application for permanent residence under the BC uh, nominee program under the skills side of things. So if you're not working with someone who knows the ins and outs and the strategies that you need to employ um, to overcome, for example, your score, if you need a, a higher score because the all program draws the last scores uh, were uh, in the 470 range and we're, we're waiting for the next all program draw under the Federal Express Entry System. Uh, and we expect that to happen in the next short while. That could be uh, next draw or in June perhaps. We're looking to see that happen. But individuals who are applying to Canada now are seeing that if you're working in Canada, you have an excellent chance to remain in Canada, either uh, through the PNP program, uh, through draws of the Federal Express Entry System that target provincial nominee programs, or under the Canadian Experience class. So it's really important to assess what are your options under the many, many programs that require insight into all of these uh, sub uh, streams that are out there. Naturally, you want to work with someone who can help you perhaps in finding employment in Canada. Because if you do have an employer willing to sponsor, your chances are very, very high that you'll be able to succeed to Canada. At immigration.ca, we have an excellent employment uh, search uh, service that uh, is very comprehensive and really works with um, uh, LinkedIn and identifying areas of the country that are uh, in short uh, supply or demand for certain occupations. We will teach you and guide you and coach you uh, under our mentoring programs, which are very substantive. We have videos and we help you position yourself so that you can market yourself and apply into many of the sub-labor markets across the country. So for people who want to immigrate to Canada, it's very important, number one, what strategy will you work with, what programs are you open to, and what are compatible with your background. And of course, you need to be able to market yourself so that perhaps you can be attractive for a potential hiring employer. As we come out of COVID now, uh, in the months ahead as people are going to be able to see. Uh, the immigration numbers to Canada are expected to increase substantially. There's a backlog of people who have been waiting to come to Canada and as Canadians become more and more vaccinated, which the numbers are showing is taking place, uh, people will be able to see 
themselves uh, going forward in their projects and relocating and taking uh, the benefits of the Canadian permanent residence that they uh, wanted to uh, apply and, and receive. Now, again, uh, what's really important is these days the numbers in Canada are very significant. The federal government uh, has, is mandated to bring in 400,000 newcomers to Canada in 2021. And of course, uh, this is coming on the heels of in, in, in Vironics polls, numerous polls in Canada show that Canadians are very welcoming with managed immigration levels. And so if you want to be part of these very interesting uh, opportunities to Canada, uh, Canada being a great choice for a number of reasons, um, it's important to work, as I said earlier, with a trusted uh, group that knows the ins and outs of the hundred su such programs that you might uh, be best suited for. Take a look at our uh, articles that we're writing of late on our news articles. Follow us on social media. Like our content, please. Thanks so much for watching today.